Hello, I'm Ted Ross. Welcome to my workshop. Uh, with the holidays coming up, uh, I've been thinking about what kind of things I want to make. And uh, since most of us have been separated from our family and friends for some time now, um, I was thinking, well, it'd be nice to be able, be able to share a meal with them. And so, uh, what kind of things might be appropriate for that? So I thought, oh, hey, since we're at the dining room table, why not make some napkin rings? So, um, I thought, well, it can serve two purposes. One, uh, not only to hold the napkins at the dinner table, but also as a conversation piece instead of a lot of more controversial subjects like politics, for example. Um, so anyway, uh, today I thought I'd share with you uh, my process, design, tools, and method of doing that. And uh, hopefully uh, this will interest you as well. And... Um, maybe help you accomplish making a few for your family and friends. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started and we'll, we'll make some of these napkin rings. So first we'll mount this between centers on here and I just use this step chuck. I like the, this for, for the smaller pieces like this and a uh, regular um, live center. And I've already marked the center, or what I think is the center of this piece. And we'll try this, this piece here first. And um, if I get two inches out of it, we'll go with it. And if I don't, then uh, we can resort to another piece of wood. But I thought I'd show you, um, you know, what this is like. Taking, um, you know, a piece of really rough uh, scrap, you might say, and, and making something out of it. There's quite a few different ways that you can round out material like this. Um, I use I'll, I use, either use a big bowl gouge or a, a roughing spindle gouge, and I use a ruffles the uh, roughing gouge today uh, to do that. So that um, I mean, it's pretty much standard roughing gouge that most of it, and I think it's it's fairly sharp right now. So. And of course, I use the shield um, to do that. Um, turn my speed down to start off with, make sure I'm clear here on everything. And uh, I, I don't, my tool rest is, I wish I had a little bit longer tool rest so I could just put it on here and do the whole thing. But uh, I like to go past a little bit so that I don't uh, fall off. And I've done that before and it's not fun. So, and I'll bring it up, I'll bring it up to speed here and uh, I'll put my shield down uh, while I'm doing that. I'm at about, about a thousand right now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's ready to sand it, sand it off, sand it down a little bit. Um, before I start the design on it because if you don't um, then you gotta sand off those marks later it's a lot easier to do it now so right, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this in the chuck first because um, sometimes going from turning between centers to the chuck it's not completely true and I like it to be as true as possible. So I'm going to put it in the chuck and then uh, make sure it's screwed up and then I'll um, go ahead and, and sand it down. There, the sanding's done, and now we're ready for a, to put the design in. I'll go ahead and mark these off. As you can see, I'm not going to get eight out of here. Uh, I'm a little bit short, so I'll get seven out of it, though. So we'll mark this off. I'll just move this up like that. I 
That's one's a little bit tough. Tougher. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So that's good. Okay, so now uh, we've got the lines marked out on here. So the next thing we'll do is we'll initially make a cut on each of these. And um, you can use a skew. Um, since I'm going to use this to part these down to the proper size, I just use the side of, the, of this uh, um, parting tool and it works pretty well. Um, I do, I do um, point it down a little bit when I do that. So that it um, so that it uh, doesn't tear the the green out. cut down initially and then I'll come back with the um, caliper. Now I'm going to mark off quarter inch segments on here on most of these. Anyway. One of these I'll leave and this one looks like a good one, but just plain. I won't do anything more to that. That one is, is pretty much done. And so the rest of these then I'll do different designs on it and I just have to decide what I want to do for design on each one. And um, so some of them I'm going to put lines in there right now and, um, and I'll do some coves and uh, maybe I'll do some beads. All right, so that's all done. Now the next step is uh, putting some embellishments on it. First we'll do a little carving and this is the, the Master Carver um, this is the one that I use and um, I've got on there a little rounded uh, tip. And I'm just going to carve this one up in these, uh, I'll show you a little pattern here. Okay, so here. Good. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to take some walnut shavings and burnish this a little bit with those. Yeah, like that. It darkened up the spots and then when I put the finish on there it'll it'll seal out. I won't blow that out with an air hose on there I'll just put the finish right on it it's a little bit of depth shadows to it okay next I'm gonna do is burn these thought I'd just show you uh, 
I did some embellishing on here and how I did that. So I have a, a, a razor tip um, burner that I use. And um, this, this piece is here. I have a, it's a fairly sharp point, the tool, thin, very thin blade on that. And then I just take and put these little slices down through here like this. I've already done this, so I'm just mimicking it now. Um, like that all the way around and then reverse the other side to do the same thing and then this one here uh, this design here is just a a tip that I just bent over on it and has a a round loop on it so it's bent over there like that it's just a round loop and it just to turn the heat up a little bit more on this one it's probably around eight on this one and um <clears throat> just set it down on each one of those. Just decide the spacing that you want and uh, go around there again on both sides of that. And then I'm going to burn these two lines here and I'm going to burn these two lines here as I weld these other ones on there as well. And uh, that'll make that stand out quite a bit. So just thought I'd share that with you. So I'm going to burn these rings now. <clears throat> and uh, I just use a piece of picture frame cable seems to work best. I've, I've purchased some wires before for doing this and I don't find them to work nearly as well as this picture fan. And I just wrapped it around a little block of wood to hold it on one end and then I just grip it with my hand with the other. And the speed's fairly quick. I'm at uh, a couple thousand RPM and you can go faster than that, but this, this works fine, good enough. Just hold it in there till you get the burn that you're looking for. goes fairly quick, especially once the wire gets warmed up. It goes pretty fast. You'll see how this stands out a little bit more. I like to see it dark right to the bottom. Amazing. Sometimes the slot's not cut deep enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's what it looks like now, so that really kind of helps that, I think. Now the um, all finished, um, the designs on them, and uh, now I'm ready to part these off of here. So because we cut this through just a little bit smaller than the width of the Forstner bit, uh, when this goes through, it will release each one separately as, as a bit progresses through there and also hollow out the inside at the same time. And then with that, um, I'll sand just the inside with my spindle sander and these will be pretty much finished. I'm going to run about uh, 750, 800 RPM, something like that. I'm at 700 right now, which is good enough. The center holds it. In place it does wander sometimes but uh, and if that happens then I just uh, recenter it on the next piece right now it looks like it's doing pretty good let it cool a little bit Here we are. This bit leaves a, I got another bit, but uh, this one centers a little bit better, but it does um, burnish a little bit more on the inside, but the spindle sander will take that right out. And end up with some nice shavings uh, in the end.
Okay, so I'll show you quickly uh, how I sand this. I'll just do uh, one of them and then uh, I'll do the rest of them and then come back again. So um, I use this to sand the sides of them. I take the back up off of it so that it's flexible and um, conforms a little bit more. And then I use the spindle sandal down here to do the inside of it. So. That's pretty much it. So we've uh, finished them all off now. They're all sanded and everything. They came out pretty nice. Uh, this one's got a small crack in it, which I'll I'll just put some uh, CA on it after I. I, I put a, a finish sealer on it. But uh, yeah, they came out pretty nice. And uh, how I put the finish on is the last thing. So uh, again, I use a tongue oil, a third tongue oil, a third polyurethane, and a third mineral spirits. And I use that for most everything that I do. You could use like walnut oil or something like that on here as well if you wanted to. But um, the way I do it is I just dump in about, you know, that much into the cup, you know, quarter to half of an inch, and then, um, oh, gloves on, I uh, just dip this in there like that so it gets saturated pretty well, like that, good coating on it, and then I put it in a plastic bag, and I'm going to leave them in there for about 20 to 30 minutes, not, not much longer than that, and the reason I put it in a plastic bag is that it slows down the evaporation of it, the curing process, um, and allows it to soak into the wood. And so it's got a good strong coat on there and it has time to soak in there. And then uh, I take them back out and with a paper towel I wipe them off clean so there's nothing left on it. And, and, uh, and then it cures you know, overnight basically and, and you're all set. And I just put one coat on these that's, you know, saturated like this, that's enough to do it. You can put more if you want shiny. Uh, I prefer a more satin, um, dull finish on it, so I, I just do one, one coat and that's it on there. That's it. So I'll put that, leave that for about 30 minutes and I'll come back and uh, we'll wipe them down. So it's been about almost a half an hour, 25 minutes or something. So we'll take these out of the bag now. And in the meantime, while we're waiting, I made another one. Um, I'll leave that in the bag for a little bit longer. And, uh, so there's a set of eight. You can see some of them soak it in a little bit more than others will on there, but uh, pretty much soaked in. Just a matter of, of wiping them down now. There. Here's the finished product. I'll give you a close up of them so you can see a little more detail. There's the last one I did a little bit different piece of wood. And then here's some ones that I've done. I'll uh, just go through these. Some other batches. These have a little more embellishment to them. That's it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Um, 
If you like it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll have other little videos. I'm going to do some with tea candle holders or a nice simple projects to do. Again, out of different scraps of wood. Um, so please join me for that. I'll have that up in the next few weeks probably as well uh, to do that. So have a great day and happy turning.